So about six months ago, I talked about the Buried Alive creepypasta under the title of Analyzing Buried Alive. It was fun to make a video dedicated to just one story, and put a lot of emphasis on the smaller details. So now, with that in mind, it should be no surprise that I'd want to do it again. This time, however, for what is technically the first time on this channel, I'll be putting the focus on a non-gaming creepypasta. One that is so far removed from video games, that I couldn't try to label it as such, even if I desperately needed to. A story that ranks high amongst the other classic creepypastas, and is known by more than a handful of internet goers. Today, we will be analyzing Smile Dog. The story of Smile Dog is a difficult one to tell. While one exists, I'd argue that Smile Dog has ascended beyond its own story. If one thinks about Smile Dog, they typically only think about its dangerous effects and images. But it is quite true that Smile Dog has a story. The story follows the author's attempts at learning more about the titular Smile Dog, otherwise known as Smile.dog, Smile.jpg, or one word, Smile Dog. For the sake of clarity, I'll be using the former rather than any of the alternatives, because Smile, space, dog, is the more popular way to format the name. In the author's attempts to learn more, he is able to contact a woman by the name of Mary E. The two first meet in person during the summer of 2007, though their meeting was anything but fruitful, due to Mary having locked herself in her own bedroom, ranting about her nightmares. The story then goes on to explain how she first encountered the image, or rather how an estimated 400 people saw it. We are then introduced to our antagonist, the entity known as Smile.Dog, or as we'll be calling it, Smile Space Dog. Viewing the image is said to cause an indefinite series of epileptic fits, those which are responsible for vivid nightmares the victims experience. The dog in the image, that which it barely resembles, is described as being vaguely similar to that of a Siberian husky, though with a distinct set of perfect human teeth, which is caught in its own twisted, permanent, unnatural grin. A reaching human arm is just barely seen emerging from the darkness of the background, the hand of which is described as beckoning. In early March of 2008, Mary E. would contact the author again via email, apologizing for her behavior during their last interaction. I feel as though there is no proper way to describe what comes next, other than to read the email verbatim. Dear Mr. L, I am incredibly sorry about my behavior last summer when you came to interview me. I hope you understand that it was no fault of yours, but rather my own problems that led me to act out as I did. I realized that I could have handled the situation more decorously. However, I hope you will forgive me. At the time, I was afraid. You see, for 15 years I have been haunted by Smile.jpg. Smile.dog comes to me in my sleep every night. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. There is an ineffable quality about my dreams, my nightmares, that make them completely unlike any real dreams I've ever had. I do not move and I do not speak. I simply look ahead and... The only thing ahead of me is the scene from that horrible picture. I see the beckoning hand, and I see Smile.Dog. It talks to me. It is not a dog, of course, uh, though I, I'm not quite sure what it really is. It tells me it will leave me alone if only I do as it asks. All I must do, it says, is spread the word. That is how it phrases its demands. And I know exactly what it means. It wants me to show it to someone else. And I could. The week after my incident, I received in the mail a manila envelope with no return address. Inside was only a three and a half inch floppy diskette. Without having to check, I knew precisely what was on it. I thought for a long time about my options. I could show it to a stranger, a co-worker. I could even show it to Terrence, as much as the idea disgusted me. And what would happen then? Well, if Smile.Dog kept its word, I could sleep. Yet if it lied, what would I do? And who is to say something worse would not come for me if I did as the creature asks? 
so I did nothing for fifteen years, though I kept the diskette hidden amongst my things. Every night for fifteen years, Smile.Dog has come to me in my sleep and demanded that I spread the word. For fifteen years, I have stood strong, though there have been hard times. Many of my fellow victims on the BBS board where I first encountered Smile.JPEG stopped posting. I heard some of them committed suicide. Others remain completely silent, simply disappearing off the face of the web. They are the ones I worry about the most. I sincerely hope you will forgive me, Mr. L. But last summer when you contacted me and my husband about an interview, I was near the breaking point. I decided I was going to give you the floppy diskette. I did not care if Smile.Dog was lying or not. I wanted it to end. You were a stranger, someone I had no connection with, and I thought I would not feel sorrow when you took the diskette as part of your research and sealed your fate. Before you arrived, I realized what I was doing was plotting to ruin your life. I could not stand the thought, and in fact, I still cannot. I am ashamed, Mr. L, and I hope that this warning will dissuade you from further investigation of Smile.jpg. You may in time encounter someone who is, if not weaker than I, then wholly more depraved. Someone who will not hesitate to follow Smile.dog's orders. Stop while you are still whole. Sincerely, Mary E. The husband Terence then contacted the author later that month that Mary had succumbed. While going through her things, he found the email in the diskette. He begs the author to listen to what his wife had said. Terence burned the diskette until it was nothing but a smoldering pile of plastic. Upon burning it, however, Terence implores that he heard it hiss as it melted like some sort of animal. The author checked, and sure enough, the obituaries proved that Mary E. was dead. With that, his pursuit ended. At least, until something fell right into his lap. An email. Hello. I found your email address through a mailing list your profile said you were interested in Smile Dog. I have saw it. It is not as bad as everyone says. I have sent it to you, here. Just spreading the word, smiley face. There was a single file attached to that email. Smile.jpg So there you have it, the story of Smile Dog. As you can see by the ending, this is Smile Dog. The story, ever so very kindly, gives us a glimpse at the image, right? Right? Well... The image presented at the end of the Smile Dog story, as it was posted on the Creepypasta Wiki, isn't the only existing image associated with the story. In fact, I wouldn't even say it's the most popular iteration. Allow me to introduce you to the red form. As you can already see plainly, this version is a lot different than the one attached to the end of the story. One may even struggle to call this thing a dog. With that in mind, one would probably assume that, due to the red image not being included at the end of the story, it would not be relevant to the story at all. Anyone thinking this, however, would be sorely mistaken. If you go to Google Images right now and search for Smile Dog Creepypasta, with the filter being before 2010, you will most likely immediately find the red form as the first result, with the dog form being only a few results after. Why is this important? Well, it's pretty simple. It really, really isn't. So why did I bring it up? Well, you see, this is actually my third attempt at making this video. The first two were ruined because each and every time I thought I was taking the right path I wanted to be on, something would happen that would change my entire perspective. Over and over, I would reach the point of breakthrough right as I was prepared to finally call it a day. In fact, this wasn't originally a creepypasta analysis video. It was initially just me discussing an aspect of the Smile Dog story that I enjoyed a lot. Though with hindsight being 2020, I now realize that I perhaps should have always 
had this video be a creepypasta analysis video. During my second attempt, I was fixated on finding which image came first, which involved the process I had just mentioned, where I found the oldest version of the red image I could. It was for an unofficial Smile Dog spin-off story called The Smile Dog. Mr. Creepypasta's reading of the story, posted in 2012, uses the image and links to a page that, as of 2014 or so, redirects to the story we all know today, instead. You can still read The Smile Dog if you want to. You can find it on the Spin Pasta Wiki. Just be warned, it's not as eloquently written as the original. So with that origin point down, can we say for certain that this story is where the image came from? Fuck no. <laughs> Fuck no. Don't you worry, dear viewer. This is not the end of the story. You see, while looking for instances of the red image, I found yet another wiki. Villains Wiki. Truly a source of all knowledge. The page for Smile Dog featured both images as one may expect, but with an interesting twist. You see, at the very bottom, you can find a single, lone piece of trivia just floating there. Despite how out of left field it may seem, the villain's wiki actually presented me with an answer. The origin of the creepypasta smile.jpg is found by Brazilian on YouTube called Pedro Coltis. He made this video revealing that Michael Lutz was responsible for Smile. Apparently it was first posted on the ex-paranormal forum of the Imageboard 4chan in 2008. According to the occult-related blog Aether Paranormal, the oldest known image linked to the story is the one shown above. This was the lead I had been looking for. So there I went, looking for Michael Lutz. I found tweets from him that explained plenty. He had made the red image and wrote the story, which was posted to the 4chan. If I had a nickel for every famous red creepypasta face image that originated from a 4chan post discussed on this channel so far, I would have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? This answered quite a few questions, but not all of mine. So it was at 4 a.m. that I felt a sense of restlessness overtake me. A desire filled my mind, one so strong that it compelled me to wake up and do the unthinkable. Send an email to Michael Lutz. Later that day, he responded, and now my questions are answered. The interaction is as follows. I am a small YouTuber currently making a video about the topic of Smile Dog, and it came to my attention that you are its creator. I was wondering if you'd be willing to answer a few questions to clarify some things. My questions are as follows. A. How would you describe the relationship between the two well-known images? Would you consider them stages of the Smile Dog entity? B. Did you make both of the images? I know you stated that you made the demon image, but... I was wondering if you made the dog image too. Which was created first? C. With a recent rise in efforts to find the sources of famous creepypasta images, many have claimed to have found the original images used to create the infamous smile dog images. Would you ever be willing to contribute to that? I'd know you've stated to have a folder somewhere with all the original assets in it. D. Are you aware of the YouTube channel Chainmail Chasters? It's a recent, ongoing, unfiction video series where Smile Dog is at the root of everything. I just thought you'd appreciate learning about that, had you not already done so. If you could take the time to answer these questions, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you for reading. Hi. Yep, I wrote the original story and the original red image. I'll answer whatever questions I feel I can. So, A. I think of the images as an example of the game of telephone where someone whispers a phrase to a person who whispers it to the next person and they whisper it to the next, and so on. By the time you get to the end, you have a completely different phrase because of the funny misunderstandings that have been introduced. The first image I made was based on my mental image of what I thought would be cool and freaky, essentially. And I wrote a story about that. In the story as I wrote it, I had a throwaway line about how it actually doesn't look like a dog, but it's what everyone seems to call it, because I thought that'd be cool and freaky. Maybe that's been stripped out of the reposts, but from the beginning I saw a lot of people miss that line and say my image doesn't even look like a dog. So I imagined someone who wanted to address that made the second image. Which was really not what I expected to happen at all. I expected people to mostly ignore the story, actually. It taught me a lot about how a mass online audience parses information. 
and how at a certain point, you as a creator cannot account for everything your audience ends up doing. B. I'm assuming Demon is the name for the red, sort of skinless looking thing. That's the one I made. The second image with a husky in it that came later, like I said above, and I don't know who made it. What's very fun though, is even in my original thread for this story, I had people playing along with the game of it dating back to the 90s and heard there was another version. So I think that opened the door in a way to the competing images. C. I do have the original asset saved, which I did on a whim when the story unexpectedly took off over 4chan for a weekend, in case I was ever needed to prove I made the thing. This isn't because I'm jealous of fan creators or anything, there wasn't really even a creepypasta community back then, but because I wanted some insurance in case some Hollywood jerks are ever like, oh, here's a free ID to make a movie about, and I can come knocking with the proof in my other hand. For that reason, I've kept the assets pretty secretive, but there may come a point where it's irrelevant and I'll share with everyone. I know some sleuths have already found most of my base images anyway. D. I think Chainmail Chasers has been brought to my attention before, but I didn't quite get that Smile Dog was like the centerpiece. That's very fun, so I'll take a closer look. Thank you for letting me know. Hope your video goes well. So there you have it. The red image is indeed the original, and yeah, I actually see what he means now. Rereading the story, it does explicitly refer to Smile Dog as, well, not a dog, multiple times even. It repeatedly clarifies that it was only vaguely resembling a dog. I suppose it truly is easier to comprehend a concept we're already familiar with. It's not like images depicting dogs with human teeth or anything new. Go to your local pet store and look at the card rack. You're sure to find at least one card with a big toothy grin dog on it. Bonus points if the card is asking the recipient to spread the word. With the origin of the red image now revealed, it does leave me with one question. Who made this one? Smile Dog was one of the most consistent causes of fear for me when I was just a kid. I remember of all the creepypastas, Smile Dog was the absolute worst of the bunch on my poor brain. Of course, in all the best ways possible. Unlike other stories, this one actually seemed to invade my life. Sure, a good scary story can stick with you, but this wasn't just sticking with me. The story implied a sense of danger that, if I were to take it at face value, would put me at risk for simply knowing about it. The idea that all it would take is glancing at the image attached to the story and I'd be haunted. It was sickeningly well done. This story felt real to my naive mind, and I'd even argue that the core concept has some realism to it, which I'll touch upon later. Interestingly enough, the red image was the first of the two that I managed to get over. I imagine it was the combination of the exaggerated features and lack of direct link to the story that led me to overcome it. The dog image, even to this day, has a subtle air of unease to it for me. Like, it feels as though the viewing is mutual. With the red image, the eyes don't seem real. They, they might be real, but they seem so glazed over and it's as though the entity wasn't completely there. With the dog, however, its eyes are trained on you. When you see it, it sees you. I would argue that the eyes on the dog are worse than the teeth, too. The teeth even make it a bit silly looking compared to the red image. I could look at the red image all day without feeling much, but the dog? I could barely stand looking at it for more than a few seconds before wanting to look away. A part of me feels it has to be the clarity. Had the red image been made less clear, like the dog image's grain effect, perhaps I would have been more unnerved. I can make out every little detail of the red image, which leads me to believe it's more of a piece of art than a photograph, whereas the dog image is coated in a fine layer of grain, leading my brain to believe it's probably a real photograph by comparison. As for the story itself, I do enjoy the way it's written. Looking back on it now, it really does hold up. With a lot of classic creepypastas, you kind of have to eat around the mold, but with this one, mold never even had the chance to grow. It really stands out as a result. What Michael Lutz said in the email was, whether he realized it or not, 
exactly how I could describe Smile Dog as a whole. Not being limited to just the appearance of Smile Dog, it seems many details about the story and its antagonist have been twisted and distorted with time. Hell, I'll even admit it, I had been infected with unofficial information for years. As shown by the email interaction, I had to clarify the relationship between the two most popular images because, for a while, with little actual idea as to how such information reached me, I had been believing that the two images were stages of Smile Dog. As in, the longer you go without giving in to its demands, the more horrific its outward appearance would become in your dreams. I also mentioned the villains wiki earlier, and on that page there's so much information that feels like it was pulled out of someone's ass. For example, here's the ever so very beautiful personality section. The Smile Dog is a very aggressive, bloodthirsty, dangerous, and sadistic entity who endlessly revels in the terrors others have of him. He is seemingly always smiling, and only seems displeased if his request is not fulfilled by his victim. Smile Dog's only real goal seems to be to spread the fear of him as far and wide as one possibly can, killing those who defy and resist him, and taking great joy in doing so as well as dragging them to hell from where some believe he came. Let's review this summary and pick from it the information we actually know about Smile Dog. Smile Dog, as evidenced by the way the story talks about it, is dangerous. Aggressive, bloodthirsty, and sadistic though? Maybe not. Smile Dog is indeed male, as shown by the Twitter post from Michael Lutz, where he refers to Smile Dog with masculine pronouns, and he is indeed always seeming to smile. One could easily infer that Smile Dog feels disappointment when the word is not spread, so I'll let that slide. Smile Dog's goal isn't clear enough to comfortably state what exactly he wants, and so the next point about him wanting to spread fear is debatable. Smile Dog is never seen killing anyone directly, so the point that he kills is absolutely just made up. Him taking joy in just about anything is also debatable, as there isn't really much emotion behind anything he does. Dragging people to hell is without a doubt the boldest claim yet. Nowhere in this story does this get even remotely implied. Not even stretching the words for the story to their thinnest can allow for this detail to be inferred. As you can see, just dissecting this one short paragraph uncovered a mountain of completely made up sourceless information. But here's the thing, I don't think that's a bad thing. Smile Dog, despite being written by one man, isn't just that one man's creation anymore. Smile Dog as it currently exists is a character and story that grew to where it is because of a loving community of people who wanted to expand upon the character. I'd even argue that the embellishing scene on just about any page of the villain's wiki, though humorous, is a sign of passion and love. Smile Dog has been dragged through that game of telephone a million times, and this leads us to where we are now. Smile Dog has been given a personality thanks to the collective efforts of a community that loves him. It's not hard to see why the villain's wiki embellishes so much, once you put that into perspective. Sure, it's a bit silly that Smile Dog has a list of crimes that include trespassing directly after psychological abuse and serial murder, but the fact that this list even exists says a lot about the passion people have for the story and character. I think that's pretty neat. Now we reach the point in the video that was originally the entire video. The first draft of this video script was all about this one point, because I found it really interesting to think about. As stated prior, I do think this video works better as part of the analysis series rather than just a 5 minute video about while Smile Dog has unsung realism. So here we are. What exactly do I mean when I say that there exists a sense of realism in a story about a demonic dog-like entity that gives you epilepsy when you look at a photo of it? Well, rather than explaining it with plain words, allow me to spin my explanation into a second person story for you to enjoy. I feel this way has more impact and will explain things better than plain words ever could. So here we go. Late one night, hours past anything logic and reason could justify, you find yourself still awake. Everyone else in the house is already fast asleep, but you persist. The reason? Intrigue and fear. You were reading these scary stories, creepypastas as they were called. You couldn't find a reason to stop either. 
The light of your screen was your last bastion of comfort as the demons you read about danced in the darkest corners of your bedroom every time you let your eyes slip away from its glow. You could describe it as being paralyzed with fear, yet you also found yourself interested in what twisted tale you'd find next. You had to know. You had to keep reading. There you were, wrapped up in blankets, comfortable yet distinctly not, when you stumbled across a new story. The Curious Case of Smile.jpg It was a story that described an image, a haunting image, one that, when viewed, would imbue the viewer with the need to share the image with others, lest they fall victim to the entity within. It was a strange yet unnerving story, one that left you wondering what this image could look like. That is, until you reached the bottom of the page. There sat the image in question, a dog with an unnatural human grin. As you bear witness to it, you could feel your face turning burning hot. The sensation of pins and needles set in as you found yourself unable to take your eyes off of the dog. This went above and beyond the other stories. The beings they described were purely in your mind, but this dog, this demon, it was all too real. Once you finally found the courage to escape its grasp, you were done for the night. That was too much. You tried to rest your tortured mind, but the darkness and silence only fueled the torment you were experiencing. You could feel your heart racing, and no matter how much you wanted to believe it was just a piece of fiction written to frighten you, how could you? If it wasn't real, why did the image exist? If the image was benign, why did you feel so violated when viewing it? If you weren't its next victim, why did you have a nightmare that very night where the creature appeared to you and demanded that you spread the word? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. I'm sure anyone could draw this conclusion with minimal effort. Smile Dog is all in your head. Everything surrounding the story was able to compound in such a way as to leave you experiencing every single symptom you were expecting to. Maybe you weren't having epileptic fits, but you didn't know that. The fact that the image kept appearing in your mind could only lead you to believe that this was your fate. The fact that you had the nightmares mentioned in the story could be hard to ignore and especially hard to justify in the moment given how hard the image was hyped up. You'd be a victim of a well-done horror setup. Everything was specifically created to create a sense of paranoia in your naive mind, and it all went over perfectly. Smile Dog is realistic because anyone could experience the symptoms described for the reasons described and genuinely believe it all to be the result of viewing the image. While it wouldn't be wrong to say that's what happened and why it happened, it would be a bit wrong to assume it was because of a demonic dog-like entity. All it takes is the right amount of paranoia in the right circumstances and bam, Smile Dog actually happened to someone and I find that kind of cool. I don't know if it was ever the intent of Michael Lutz to write a story this way. I just find it interesting that one could experience the events of Smile Dog under the right circumstances. Sure, in the end, it's all just your mind playing tricks on you, but let's not act like that isn't still a freaky idea. Now we reach the end. Smile Dog is without a doubt one of the more interesting creepypastas, in multiple different ways. It's an image creepypasta where the image isn't the sole reason it's scary, as well as a classic creepypasta that still holds up perfectly in terms of concept and writing. It's so strange to see its quality when compared to the likes of Jeff the Killer, which holds equal popularity. The community that is formed around Smile Dog is fairly interesting, given that a lot of what most know about the character comes from purely fan interpretation. There are so many images that attempt to give their own depiction of Smile Dog, and I feel that really holds true to the spirit of the story. It's a story about a hoax, about a rumor. It's only natural that multiple interpretations sprout up. In the end, no matter what version of the story and character you subscribe to, that's still spreading the word, is it not? Have a fungus.